everyone, my name is Taylor Smith, aka The Career Coach, and today I'm talking about objectives. So if you've ever wondered what is an objective or a professional summary section on your resume, then this video is dedicated to you, so keep on watching. Until then, my name is Taylor Smith again, and I am a career coach, and I help college students and young professionals get noticed by recruiters, stand out as a top candidate, and get offers for paid internships and full-time opportunities. If any of that resonates with you, then you are in the right place, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started with our video. Alrighty, so what exactly is an objective? In short, it's a one or two liner that's explaining exactly who you are, what you're looking for in a position. Professional summaries is kind of very similar to an objective. I would say this is more common in previous years where it's more of a brief summary or a paragraph of who you are, some of the skill sets and things that you bring to the table, some of your competencies and what you're looking for in a position. So this could take up a decent amount of space on your resume. And I would say in today's time, it's just not very common and it's not really necessary because in now, now today's time um, with our technology and everything that's evolved, there's a lot more applicants applying for every single position. So on average, there's about 200 applicants for every single job posting out there. And that means that hiring managers, recruiters, HR managers, they don't have the time to really look at every single person's resume in detail. And with that said, the only the average recruiter is only looking at your resume for about five to six seconds on average, which means that you need to catch their attention up front and you're putting the most important information in front of them. And that's why professional professional summaries are something that's kind of a thing of the past and more managers are asking you not to necessarily include this because it's just not really necessary. In a lot of ways, this can be redundant of some of the information that's going to be presented throughout your resume or you would rather show them or paint the story rather than just telling someone that you have these skills. So if you want to learn more about how to apply some of this into your smart descriptions on your resume, you can check out this video right here where I talk all about that. And smart descriptions is basically something I created. It's very similar to smart goals and just applying those same principles, but talking about how you can um, really better your descriptions within your resume. Alrighty, so when should you include this objective on your resume? So I would say there's two main reasons why you would include it on your resume. The first is for a career fair. So let's say, for example, you're going to a career fair and you're talking to multiple company representatives. You may want to tailor your resume depending on which company you're talking to or be very specific and clear on what exactly you are looking for. So I think this is an appropriate time to really specify if you're looking for more of an internship or a full-time opportunity, as well as the specific function or department you wanna work in, whether that's engineering, research and development, HR, finance, operations and supply chain, project management, the list really goes on and on. If you are interested in learning more about what exactly is a career fair or other ways to prep for it besides just having a good resume, make sure you check out these two videos up here where I talk about all of that in more detail. So the second reason I would say you could keep your objective on your resume is if you have very little to no experience. So maybe you're first started getting into the workforce, maybe you only really have any leadership experience, then you may be struggling to make sure your resume isn't blank and empty. So I would say that it's okay to keep your objective on your resume because you want to make sure that you're not turning in some kind of empty resume and it really kind of umps you up. If you want to know about more sections you can include on your resume because you're really at a loss and you don't know what you can add, check out this video here where I give lots of examples and some ideas on what may align with you and what you've done in the past so that you can really highlight this and bring it to your resume to show some of the great assets that you have and which would make you a great employee or a great candidate for whatever you are applying to, scholarship position, etc. With that said, you otherwise I just don't really think that you really need an objective on your resume and you should probably just go ahead and remove it because it is taking up valuable real estate. So like I kind of mentioned before, HR managers are asking that people start removing these objectives and these professional summaries from your resume. And the main reason for that is if you're doing a direct application online, you know exactly what you want in a position because it's listed on the job posting. So the hiring manager obviously knows what it is that you're looking for. However, if you are going to a career fair, it's not very clear what exact position you want. And so that's why it's okay to be a little bit more general and have this objective on your resume because you may have not even applied online and this is your first foot into conversation with any kind of representative within the company. Otherwise, you really wanna make sure that you're focusing more on the meat of your resume, which would be those smart descriptions we talked about before and really showing 
and not just telling people some of the things that you know, some of the things that you bring to the table as far as skill sets, etc. If you want to learn more about the things that can make you stand out as a top candidate with recruiters, make sure you check out this video called The Perfect Resume, where I talk about the main things recruiters are looking for in order to make you stand out and likely progress to next steps. So what to include in your objective? So I like to think and say that I created this perfect formula of what to include in your objective, which is just a few things. So the very first thing that you want to include are two to three adjectives or soft skills that describe you. So if you have a soft skills section on your resume, this is something else that I suggest that you highly remove because a lot of these skill sets employers today more or less expect you to have. So it doesn't really make you stand out. And again, it's taking up valuable real estate you could use for something else. With that said, you can instead insert these soft skills into this objective part of your resume to let people know a little bit of who you are and yeah, what are some of the great things that you bring to the table. So the second thing I want you to include in your objective are specifically what you're looking for. So again, with the career fair example, this is more so specifying if you're looking for an internship, a full-time opportunity. This is also specifying the specific industry if you would like to. So whether you're interested in oil and gas, renewable energy, pharmaceuticals, tech, you can specify this within this section of your resume. You can also go a step further and also talk about the specific department or function, whether that's engineering, finance, HR, communications, the list goes on and on like we mentioned. The third piece you want to include in your objective is what are some of the things that you bring to the table? So whether this is some of your education and knowledge you learned in school, whether related to nursing, related to engineering, etc. And then maybe even some of different trainings you may have taken, you can add that information in there as well as different skill sets. So maybe you're really good at has op analysis, maybe you're really good at root cause analysis, what have you, you can add these things into this section of the objective. And then lastly, you want to bring it home on how you're going to help the company and benefit them. So basically, what is it and what what's in it for them by hiring you? So are you going to help them surpass different types of goals they have, different targets as far as revenue, etc. You can keep this very general, but this is what you could potentially include within this portion of your objective. So here's an example of an objective that you could use following this perfect formula I created. So the example is hardworking, determined, and detailed oriented student seeking an engineering internship to apply and test my engineering knowledge and skills, all while assisting and surpassing company goals. And that's really it. We applied the objective with the adjectives and soft skills. We talked about what specifically we were looking for, which was that internship, right? We talked about what I bring to the table, which is my engineering knowledge and skills. And then lastly, brought it home that I will help the company surpass any company goals that they have. So again, you really want to make sure this objective is very short and sweet because again, the average recruiter is only looking at your resume for five to six seconds. This is giving a brief overview of what you are looking for in a position, a little bit of who you are, but you really want them to learn more about your technical aspects, all these other skills and assets that you bring to the table by reading and looking through your resume and all your different descriptions, where you will give more specific examples of how you may be hardworking, how you may be very analytical, how you may be an adaptive team player, etc. The different things that you would include in your soft skill sections. And instead of listing them, you want to make sure that you're actually really showing them and painting a picture. So I do just really want to make this clear and really bring this home for y'all so that you know how instead you can make your resume really flow and talk about these things instead of just listing them. If you're feeling a little nervous at the comment about the average recruiter looks at your resume for an average of five to seconds, five to six seconds at initial glance, then you really should consolidate your resume down to one page to make sure you're talking about the most critical information. You wanna to try to avoid rambling and talking about anything redundantly um, multiple times, whether it's very similar positions or talking about things in your professional summary and then reiterating those a little bit later because it's just not 
really adding too much value to your resume and is taking up that time where the recruiter is trying to get hooked on your resume at first and really bring them in to keep and continue reading it. However, if your resume is more than one page, then you're really going to lose the interest pretty quickly or they may just not get to that second page and they may completely miss it. So with that said, you guys are in luck because next week I am posting a new video where I'm going to talk all about consolidating your resume to one page. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you are one of the first people to watch that video when it comes out. Alrighty y'all, well that's it for this video today. If you like this and if you learned something new, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can check out more videos I have related to career readiness, as well as different career paths related to engineering, supply chain, and so much more. If you wanna stay connected with me on social media or book a service with me, I'll put all of that in the description box below. But until then, best of luck to you guys, happy job hunting, and I will talk to y'all very soon.